Okay, let's see if we can solve this puzzle. So, if we're going to pull the pendulum over here, it's on line number three, it's going to go back to uh, line number three. That's, that's about as far as it's going to swing. Here, if it's on line number one, it's going to go back to line number one. That nail isn't really going to make much of a difference. Here, the super low nail is going to make uh, a huge difference. Let me see. Uh, it depends on if the nail has a board attached to it, like the one we saw in the previous video, because uh, as you saw, the ball would hit the board here and then stop. And that that's because the swinging area, or no, this is probably a better example. When the swinging area is higher than the nail, then it actually goes like this. It will actually stop like that because of the, the board. And uh, let's try this one. Yep, there we go. Okay, so that's our solution. Cool. Alrighty. Hopefully what I what I said there makes sense. You know, the nail if you've got a nail which is interrupting the string, that's going to affect how far the pendulum will go. And that's just clearly a simple puzzle, just trying to figure out if you know if you've figured out the pattern. Here I'm clearly going this way around rather than jumping off a cliff. But I'm still gonna follow this pink wire. Ah, another crate. Almost finished with this crate puzzle, I think. Almost. One more, one more. Okay, pink wire leads here into this hut, into this hut, where we have more journal notes and presumably another puzzle. journal notes we have so far. Okay, so this is clearly this next puzzle. Okay, come on, come on. I want to solve this puzzle. Okay, we've got the balls of different, different weights. We've got them on pendulums. Gee, I wonder if one of them will stop swinging earlier than the other. Ooh, you even got a little counter there at the bottom, keeping track of how many times they swing. Notice how uh, the lighter one is starting to slow down, the heavier one is not. I guess slow down is a relative term, because the, the lighter one is clearly making more back and forth motions uh, more quickly, but now it's stopped completely. Uh, three, let's go for 24. Let's go for 25. Okay, now three is stopped completely. So I'm gonna guess this one's gonna go for 38, 39, 40. Gosh, what was the difference between the other two? 12? So 44 around. 44 abouts. Okay. We have done that particular experiment. Good. Okay. Objects of different masses. Uh, if they all fall at the same speed using our pendulum here, we can count how many times it does. Okay, that sounds good. Wait, how many pages? We're on like page 230. Ah, wow, I cannot believe I've read 200 pages of these things. Anyway, that's kind of a cool experiment though. That's, that's kind of cool. I like those swinging pendulums. In any case, let's follow the red wire now. 
Oh gosh, it goes all the way up this hill. Okay, um, I'll just go up and loop around, I suppose. Hmm, I'm not sure I can go up here. Oh, I can. Okay, let's just go up and loop around, make sure that there aren't any, like, puzzles that the red wire ran into in the meantime. Yeah, nope, just this bridge. And that was the bridge I followed earlier to get the green wire. Okay, so red wire went up here from the house. There were no crates when it went up. So let me just try to run back over here. Imagine being the person who set up all these puzzles. Complicated, huh? Red clearly goes all the way up here in a vacuum. Hmm. Ooh, we have to move these things around. Okay, so if the rock is 2, uh, 20 over 10. Twig is not going to be 15, though. Does this require me remembering? Okay. So, uh, this is clearly an order of fastest to, um, not as fast. Uh, uh, we saw this in an earlier puzzle. Okay, so this, if this is 20 divided by 2... Okay, 3... Four, five, and 10. Again, this is going to be hard to do without any other numbers. <laughs> I mean, we've got the one number in place, but none of the others. And it doesn't look like we've got clues right here in our book. Yeah, because this is more about the pendulums. This is back with the pendulums here. So gosh, do I have to flip back several, several dozen pages in order to get to the, uh, to the, the stuff about a vacuum? Perhaps not, um, perhaps it's this. Okay. Now that we've got all of these pieces here, we can solve this puzzle, kind of? Okay, so 5 kilograms, 5.1, uh, why do we have a dodecahedron and a, a, a pyramid and a, not a sphere? That's a cube. I guess that's not a dodecahedron. Anyway! <laughs> okay. So 4, 5, 2.3, and 1.2, but that's not... <clears throat> that's not really correlated to this particular puzzle. Okay, give me just one moment here. Okay, I just looked up the solution, and I feel stupid for myself now. I I forgot. Yeah, in a vacuum, there's no air resistance, so all of these things are actually going to fall at the exact same speed in a vacuum. Oh, okay, okay. So hold on a second. It's O2, O2, O2 is the solution for all of these things. You put them all together, and what do you get? You get O2, no two, O2. Whoa, dude, that's true. Let's just follow number green, or green and greenish. I've already forgotten what line I'm following.